sing and worship. Created from dust And you came and you lived among us And you took on our frame You walked in our pain And now you're taking us higher And you stepped into time You lay down your life to save us And you took on our shame On the cross it was laid And now you're taking us higher We go from glory to glory to glory We'll never be the same Never be the same we go from glory to glory to glory we're forever changed forever changed you call me your friend brought into your endless kingdom by the blood i was made i'm no longer Slave, and now you're taking us higher. We go from glory to glory to glory. We'll never be the same. Never be the same. We go from glory to glory to glory. We're forever changed. Forever changed. Till we reach that day, love conquers everything. We'll cry an anthem singing, holy, holy. And when we see that day, love conquers Took on the grave, so not even death can shake us. Now the victor has won, and heaven has come, and now you're taking us higher. And now you're taking us higher. We go from glory to glory. Lord, we'll never be the same, never be the same. We go from glory to glory to glory. We'll forever change, forever change. Never be the same, never be the same. We go from glory to glory to glory. We forever change, forever change. We go from glory to glory to glory. You take us higher and higher.
How many of you know we go from glory to glory? Amen. Let's give God a great big shout of praise this morning. Father, we thank you that you're here right now in this moment and in this hour. And we give our praise to you because you're worthy of our praise. You're worth our adoration this morning. And so, God, we give it to you today as we continue in worship and praise to bring honor and glory to your name. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen.
who could carry that kind of weight it was my tomb till I met you and I was breathing but not alive and all my failures I tried to hide it was my tomb till I met you. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Your mercy has saved my soul. And now your freedom is all that I know. The old day knew Jesus when I met you. You called my name. sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now you're say this is a good day to be alive. Hug somebody's neck and then welcome them here this morning.
Welcome to Lifehouse. If this is your first time with us, please fill out an orange guest card near you. You can take your card to the Connection Center to pick up a special gift. Our way to say thank you for worshiping with us today. Life groups are happening in Midland and Odessa this Wednesday night. Ministry is provided at the main campus for children and youth. Doors open at 6.30 and child drop-off is available at the south entrance. We're bringing everyone together for the LHF Food Truck Social on Wednesday, May the 2nd at 7 p.m. Grab dinner at the food trucks and have fun at the game tables or on the jumpers. Get to know the other life groups and just hang out and relax. Lifeline youth are grades 6 through 12 and they are gearing up for Discovery Camp June the 20th through the 23rd. The cost is $124 per person. To reserve your spot, talk to Katarina Rendon ASAP. Camp packets with all the details are available at the Connection Center. Fireside Chat is a ministry for men that meets the first Monday of the month at Logan's Roadhouse in Midland and the third Monday of the month at Logan's Roadhouse in Odessa. Pastor buys the tea and appetizers and the entrees are Dutch treat. Real Women Ministries meets the second and fourth Mondays at 7 p.m. at Lifehouse Fellowship. Discover how to own your life story and use it for God's glory. Promotion Sunday is June the 10th. This is a time that we recognize and pray for all those moving up to their next grade level and honor our high school graduates. Get your cameras ready and let's celebrate together. In just a moment, we will receive tithes and offerings. To give securely with your mobile device, text LHF to the number 77977 and follow the prompts. You can also go to lifehousefellowship.net or simply use an envelope provided on a chair back near you. The best way to stay up to date on the happenings at Lifehouse is the Lifehouse app. You can listen to sermons, check the events calendar, and so much more. Be sure to allow notifications so you can receive the latest updates from Lifehouse. Good morning, church. How y'all doing this morning? Man, it feels so good to be back home. It really does. I've been gone for the last two Sundays, and it just feels really good to come back to a home where I feel secure, I feel loved, and most importantly, I get Jesus. So I'm so excited to be with y'all. If y'all just got here and y'all haven't received the bulletin, just please raise your hand and we'll get that to you. Our ushers will get that to you. But as we get ready to give our tithes and offering this morning, um, I just want to take us to John 6, 16 through 21. And it says, that evening, Jesus' disciples went down to the shore to wait for him. But as the darkness fell and Jesus still didn't, hadn't come back, they got into the boat and headed across the lake towards Capernaum. Soon a gale swept down upon them and the sea grew very rough. They had rowed three or four miles when suddenly they saw Jesus walking on water towards the boat. They were terrified, but he called out to them, don't be afraid, I am here. Then they were eager to let him in the boat, and immediately they arrived at their destination. And this, this um, verse was given to me about two Sundays ago when I was in Mississippi sitting in a church service. And the pastor was speaking on this. And he was speaking on one thing, but Jesus was speaking to me about a whole nother thing. And he was like, you know, this is kind of, this is exactly how life is, you know, as a Christian. Sometimes we, you know, the Lord has told us something. He has given us a promise and, you know, we're waiting on him. We're waiting, we're waiting patiently, we're waiting patiently. And then something happens, we don't see it coming in our time that we want it to come. And we get, you know, we get in a rush and we're just like, okay, Lord, I think I can do this. I think I can do this. When he told us, all he told us was be still, just wait, wait on me. And a lot of times we get eager and we're like, okay, I, I, I can do this. I can do this. And we begin to go without Jesus right, on, right in our boat with us. And then when storms come and things begin to happen and things happen that we were like, we didn't expect. We're like, Jesus, like, help us. 
And Jesus all along, he's sitting there and he's calling out to us and he's saying, come, don't be afraid. I am here. He's not just saying, I am here. He's saying, no, the great I am is here. The great I am is here to be there. If you need him to be your healer this morning, if you need healing this morning, he's saying, I am your healer. If you're needing breakthrough, if you're needing financial breakthrough, he's saying, I am your provider. And I was just like, Lord, that is just so amazing. But one thing that stuck out to me was that the disciples had to let him into the boat. And as soon as they let Jesus into the boat, they immediately, not just for a few days, no, they immediately got to their destination. And Jesus is saying, I need you to open up the boat. I need you to let me step into the boat with you so you can immediately get to your destination. And a lot of times when we think, okay, you, we get to our destination, a lot of times we're like, okay, we're there. But no, it's a process. We have to continue daily to let Jesus into our boat so that we can get to the destination that the Lord has for us that day. So as you give this morning and as you give your tithes and offering, know that Jesus is in your boat. So you don't have to be afraid because you have the great I am with you in your boat. So when storms come, when financial things come your way, you say, uh-uh, I have the great I am. I have the provider. I have my source in the boat with me. So I'm just so pumped now. Like I'm fired up now because he is. He is. So y'all have to hold on and know that the word of God, his promises, we're in covenant. Just how um, Miss Tanya was saying last week, we're covenant people. So as we do our part and we let him in, he's doing his part and he's going even further. Our step to him, he's going a mile and that's all he wants. So as we get ready to get our tithes and offering, can I have y'all stand with me so we can pray and just lift this up to the Lord? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you that you are the great I am, that whatever that we're needing this morning, Father God, if it's financially, if it's physically, if it's emotionally, Father, that you are everything. If we're needing a comforter, Father God, you are a comforter. If we're needing a provider, Lord, that you are a provider, Lord. As they give their tithes and offering, Father, may they have faith, Lord, knowing that you have already gone before them, that you have already taken to the destination that you have given us long time ago when you died for us and we just thank you Lord let there be faith that there's no fear that there will be no fear but they will know that they have faith knowing that they have they serve a father who is faithful and just to complete every promise that he has given us and we just thank you in Jesus name amen um ushers you may serve the people We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your comfort. You bring peace to me. You've been peace to us. When we walk through the storms, when the road seems long, you are still there. And you bring peace. You bring peace to my soul. You bring peace to my soul. You bring peace to my soul. If you're in here this morning and there's an issue going on in your body right now that you need healing and you need the Lord to touch your body right now and if you're online I'm going to encourage you to do the same thing I want you just to place your hand wherever the ailment is whatever's going on I want you just to take 
your hand and I want you to place it on that spot right now. And here's something I learned in the ministry of healing is that you've got to see that Jesus is bigger than whatever's going on in your body right now. You see, because if your problem is bigger than what, what you, how you see Jesus, then guess what's going to win in that situation? The problem. But you need to know that Jesus is big enough. He's more than able to do whatever needs to take place in your body to bring complete healing and to bring complete alignment. So let's just lift them up right now. Whatever your issue is, Lord, I just pray, God, for backs to be healed right now in the name of Jesus, that muscles would relax, nerves would go back into alignment, pain would go now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that necks are being healed right now in Jesus' name. God, that you're aligning the spine right now. Every vertebrae is going back into place. Father, that you're bringing healing to stomach issues right now. Intestine, uh, stomach area, all of that is working and functioning as you created it to function right now in the name of Jesus. All pain go now. All pain go now in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask that you would bless those bodies now and bring healing and restoration in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, amen. Let's continue to worship this morning.
Jesus, you change everything. Life's healed, hope found here now. Jesus, you change everything.
And you come with a heart of gratefulness and gratitude. And when you come with that kind of heart, let me tell you what happens. He cannot be denied. He will show up. And 
furthermore, he'll show out. I like what Kat said because it was so pertinent for the times we are living in. So many people want to drive their own ship, drive their own boat, get to their own destination. You know, they were in Capernaum heading over to the other side. And how many times in life do you and I hop in the boat with a plan? We're going to try to get to the other side, but we find ourselves in the middle of the ocean or in the middle of the sea going, what in the world have I just done? Your results because of your decisions, your passions, and God doesn't mind you having passions and God doesn't mind you having plans but is he involved in them I'll never forget my, what my great uncle said he said one day he had, a, he, had a, he had an experience with God and this is what the Lord told him he said I'm tired in essence this is what, was, what he said I'm not going to put those kind of words on him but this is in essence what he said Lord tired of working for you I want to work with you today God wants to work with you he wants to be with you in your marriage he wants to be with you when you're training your children he wants to be with you on your job not working for him doesn't need another servant, so to speak. He wants sons and daughters. Alfonso, I'm supposed to lay my hands on you, sir. Come here. I was worshiping there and I looked back and the Lord told me to anoint you with oil. Is that okay? Is there anybody else that want to? I know probably the whole church was like this, but you've been in a season where you need you need a fresh anointing. Is that you? Come on down. All I saw was Alfonso. But if you want it, you come get it. Lord, we thank you for the reign of your presence. Fresh anointings. Newness. <laughs> anointing upon them as they lead their families. Strengthen their bodies. Strengthen their hearts. May they feel your love in a greater way. They can rest assured that all is
It's that peace now. If that's you, would you just raise your hand? If all across this congregation, the anointing of peace, the anointing of love, just rest in him. Rest in him. Rest in him. You don't have to have all of the details. <laughs> Josh, come here. Where's Andrea? Is she here?
There's healing in his hands. There is deliverance in his hands. Here's freedom from bondage being set free and he'll set other people free as he lays hands on them. And Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in him and what you're doing in their family. I reverse the curse. No more. That curse is broken. The spirit of that, oh, the spirit of uh, a bondage is broken in Jesus' name. From this day forward, I call you blessed. I call you blessed. I call your hands blessed. And oh, ha, ha. see, God wants to do some. Uh, are, you, are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? God's going to do something major through you. Yeah, we, we think it's the brother. And, and that's good, but God's going to do more. And he says, get your hopes up. Set your sights a little higher. For what I want to do for you and want to do through you is set the captives free. Don't go back. Hallelujah. Move forward. Move forward. <laughs> anointing Tanya Jane I just sense that the, the fire there's going to be a greater fire there's going to be a greater I don't know how to say it to you because I, it's not your it's not your dreams aren't big it's not that but I just sense that you're going to you can't, you're not going to be able to contain what's about to take place and as your husband that's one thing but I'm your pastor too and so joy girl joy amen you know it's 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 better that she under, she understands the role of husband and pastor and she knows the difference and brother that 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 was totally because i want you to i want you to feel the force of god I want you to know that he, he's, he's ready. And you don't have to, you know, it's not like you have to know the whole Bible. Jesus loves you is a powerful three words you could ever say to someone. And then, the, then they read the Bible through your life. See what I'm saying? Man, mama, God's doing something amazing. I didn't know it was you the other day. We went to the restaurant. I was just like, praise God. God's so amazing how he does things. Keep your hopes up, okay? It's a new day. It's a new day. Things you've been believing God for. The visions and dreams that have been placed down in your spirit.
he won't let you down. You can trust that he knows you. Well, I missed it. Welcome to the club. I've fallen short. Haven't we all? There's no one here. I, if you're perfect, would you please show me how to be perfect? I mean, the only way I'm imperfect is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And, and, in, and in Him, I'm made perfect. When I fall down, the Bible says a righteous man dusts himself off. a microphone Tanya yeah. I just want you to share a little bit about some of the testimonies that's been going on about what God's been doing in our life groups and it's, it's just good for people to hear you can be seen we um, have a couple that has been coming they've recently moved back to Midland and um, the husband was involved in a motorcycle accident motorcycle Motorcycle accident. Yeah, motorcycle. Um, some time ago, and has had some effects of that. Um, one is he's lost use of one of his hands. There's no, or little to no nerve um, action happening in his hand. And the downside of that is he's always worked in the oil industry, but you have to pass physicals to get on, um, hired with a lot of companies. So he keeps applying and going for physicals and getting failed and not getting the job. And so he, they just said, we've got to have a job. Will you all pray with us? So and he's uh, applied to 34 companies. Yeah, 34. Go. 34. So it's not for lack of trying. <laughs> and so um, he said, I got a call to come in <clears throat> for the company I've really wanted to work for. Would you just pray for me? So we came into agreement. We prayed for his hand. And he said, you know, ever since I've been coming to church, they've been coming here in two or three weeks. And uh, he said, I started feeling some stuff in my hands, and I can feel my fingers now. And so we're believing for a miracle in his hand for those nerves to be restored. And he said, uh, but pray for me for this job. So we prayed for him, and I got a text that week that he was going in for his physical. So we prayed again. And she, she messaged me the day after that and said, well, he passed everything on the physical except for his hand, the grip strength test. But they didn't completely fail him. They referred it to his company's safety supervisor to let them make the call. So we prayed for favor, and we got the call the next day he got the job. So there's no mountain too high. Amen. We have another family who had come to us, and um, her husband has uh, been diagnosed with a chronic illness, and the treatments were going to be thousands of dollars a we're month. We're talking not just two or three no, thousand. Not like a, a couple month. of hundred. Thousands of dollars a month, and their insurance wasn't going to pay for the treatments. And so um, they went through the process with the pharmaceutical company to try to get some assistance to do the treatments. And during that process, he said, you know what, I'm not going to do that. And fear gripped her heart because she was like, why wouldn't you do it? And he said, I'm trusting the Lord that I'm going to be healed. And so she came and she said, I need you to pray with me because I want to get in line, but I'm struggling to get over the fear. So we prayed and we came in agreement and we said, as his faith is, so, so shall, shall it be. Spirit. And the following week, he went in and had a sonogram on a spot on his organ and blood work done, and it all came back good. And so we are continuing to stand in faith. Right there. I didn't want to call your name, but Mr. Lonnie and Miss Ellen, as your faith is, Mr. Lonnie, so shall it be for you. Praise God. Praise God. He's so good. Um, 
we had another couple business owners. They said the phone hadn't rung for three months. Yeah. Here and there every now and then. And they needed some breakthrough. And now they say, quit praying. We can't keep up. <laughs> it's all turned around. God hears us when we pray. And he answers us. Thank Amen. You. Thank you so much. I'm going to tell you something, church. Things are happening. God is moving. And I think because we don't hear it many times, we think, well, nothing's going on. Well, I'll tell you, God's moving. I'm going to tell you, my mother, and I, don't, I think she's watching online. I don't think she'll mind me telling you this. We had her house on the market. You know, many of y'all know that my dad passed away a year, a little over a year and a half ago. And we've had the house on the market few bites here and there, but nothing. And how many know all it takes is one? Huh? And and, uh, so the next door neighbor, his grandson is looking for a home, but just needs a year. Just needs a year to get his situation set. And God opened the doors for a lease purchase to happen where mom gets full dollar for her house. Isn't that amazing? Now I know why they didn't never wanted to move to Midland. Because I've been moving them for the last two or three weeks and they got more stuff. We had garage sales yesterday and we're back but We'll finally get her back to here to Midland this week, Monday, I think, tomorrow. So God's on the move. God's on the move. In the last days, the Bible says, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will see visions. Dream dreams. So I got that mixed up somehow, but you you get it. There's a great outpouring of the Spirit. Don't ever think you're a part of, uh, of something that's dead. Great miracles are taking place. We, there's a, another businessman, and I, I just feel like I need to, need to encourage your faith today. Another businessman came to me and said, Pastor, I made a decision about giving my first fruits off the very top of our business. He said for, the, for, for, for a period of time, about three months, it looked like nothing was taking place. We had made that decision to give the first fruits off the top, everything. He said, he said something kicked 2018 what's 2018 what are we calling it a year of what new beginnings he said pastor I believe that this church is going to receive six figures from our company this year off our tithe only well praise God I'm like, hallelujah. God's good. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is good. What are you believing for? Lance, man, he told me about it. But his, uh, his, his company, man, just hooked him up. Way to go, Lance. Praise God. All of I, we're blessed people. So when we come into this house, let's don't come in here heavy. Let's come in here going, whoa, what are you going to do now? (laughs) How do you want to do this? How do you want to go about this? Some say, well, it ain't going good for me. That's all right. Things will change. It's subject to change. It's temporal. Amen. We're believers. And believing is what we do. Believing is who we are. 
We're not fear and doubters, worriers. No, we're believers. We trust God. We trust his word. Amen. Have we handed out the handouts? Very good. Is there the, the, the prayer? Is the prayer in there? That's at the end. Very good. Get the prayers ready because I don't want to. Yeah. Before I hop into my message, I got one more announcement. Come on up, Miss Jane. Tanya Jane's our. We um, want to. <laughs> <laughs> want to recognize um, a new member of our staff, Laura Martz. If you'll come up here, please yeah. give her a hand. Uh, Laura has taken a. We're gonna just. Uh, Laura has taken a part-time position with us as the Helps Ministry Assistant Coordinator. She's overseeing our greeters, launching a first-time team, uh, taking that on and, and putting some systems and structures there. So we're so excited. She's here. It's the beginning point of what we believe will grow and, and continue. And so we're thankful that she's here this Thursday at 6, 7. At seven this Thursday at 7 o'clock, it's in your bulletins. There is a greeter meeting for all of our current greeters if you are like, I need to find a place to plug in, let me just tell you, you know, some people go, well, anybody can open a door. How hard is that? That's not how we see greeters. Greeters are the first line of ministry at our church. Because how many of you could testify the biggest fights happen on Sunday morning on your way to church? And, all right? And your greeters are the first one to say, peace, be still, come on in. <laughs> and so there, but there is some power that, and some ministry that happens at the front door that some of us never know happens. So we believe in our greeters being trained and fully equipped to, to fulfill that calling. And so Laura's going to be training and scheduling and recruiting and all of those things. So if you've never been a greeter and that's a place you say, I want to be a part of that, get with Laura today. She'd love to visit with you. But we're glad you're here. Welcome. Thank you. All right, give her a hand. Ushers, can I have one of those, please? Turn in your Bibles, if you will, with me today. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. How many of y'all are thankful for second chances? <laughs> Five of you. How many of y'all are thankful for second chances? Yeah, that's who our God is. He never gives up on us, does he? He loves us through the process. He loves you through the process. Don't give up on one another. Love each other through the process because that's who your God is. He loves you so much. Today we're going to continue the series of Tomorrowland. And, and I, I'm, <laughs> this, this series for me, it's in my wheelhouse because I love talking about the return of Jesus. And I love the preparation that it, it gives my, I should I say like this, it, I love that my heart is ready for his return. Some of you heard me tell the story of my aunt and uncle who were who were cooking dinner and they were sitting around the table and the the screen door is open on the back porch and it's a nice fall afternoon and they're sitting around the table and they're just talking about the return of Jesus because that's what we just did as a family we just we talked about Jesus coming back. Grandma and grandpa, aunts and uncles, cousins, we all got together and we just talked about the return of Jesus and what's that going to look like and what is it going to look like after we come back with Jesus after seven years of the marriage supper of the Lamb when we come down and rule as kings and priests as in the millennial reign. And he sets up his kingdom on this earth. And he, and he rules in Jerusalem. That's why moving the embassy is so significant. Yeah. Yeah. 
That, that is a power, that's a powerful truth in the Word of God that in the a biblical prophecy now has been revealed. It, it's, it's amazing. Signs of the times. And so we was always talking about the signs of the times in our home. We just did it. So here my aunt and uncle are, they're with their girls and and they're talking about the return of Jesus and and uh, the screen doors open on the on the back porch and all of a sudden they hear this trumpet sound. And their first thought was this, Jesus is here. And then the twinkling of an eye happened and they're still sitting there. They noticed it was the sixth grade kid next door practicing his trumpet out on the back in the backyard. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Are you expecting like that? That's kind of expectancy and hope I want to live with. Are you expecting Jesus' return? Because he's coming. When? I don't know when. Nobody knows when. Jesus said, I don't even know when. Only the Father knows when. But we're expecting his return. And I believe this series and this message about the, our future and what's, what's coming up on the days ahead. You don't have to live in fear. Tomorrow will end. Facing a future with no fear. No fear. Fear tolerated in your life will contaminate your faith. Fear tolerated, faith contaminated. We can't live with contaminated faith. So what do we have to do? Kick fear out of the house. Kick fear out of the marriage. Kick fear out of our lives. Kick fear out of our hearts and minds. And stay people of faith. Amen. We're people of faith. That's what we do. Just like I'm a believer. Guess what else I am? I'm a faither. We're going to faith it. We're going to trust God. We're going to believe God. You know, last night I was thinking, we, we were in Plainview, and we, we went by the cemetery. And we uh, went and saw my, my, the, my dad's headstone. You know, he's not there. He's not there. Saw Aunt Paula's, Amy's mother. Saw Aunt Paula's headstone. Guess what? Aunt Paula ain't there. Then right next to Aunt Paula is the grandma and grandpa, Kenneth and Joyce Johnson. They're not there. You have a blessed hope. You close your eyes, you open your eyes. Same way it is in death. Close your eyes on earth, open your eyes. Where will it be? I believe it's heaven for each and every one of you. And if you don't know when you open your eyes, it will be heaven. Well, I got good news for you today. Before you leave here, we can make sure when you open your eyes, you're going to see the King. In all of his glory. Amen. Turn in your Bibles, if you will, with me. To Luke. Okay? I'm going to read this out the passage, tra- uh, the pa- Passion Translation. I'm not either because I didn't bring that book with me. Can you go grab my Passion Translation off my desk? But as you're turning, as you're turning to Luke, go ahead and just go to 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 5. I knew I was forgetting something. Passion translation. You got it. Well, God bless you, brother. (laughs) 
I love the passage, uh, Passion Translation. You know, it's, it's good to have several translations. So you can really determine and find out what the word is actually saying. How many know you, you can be clear? You can have some clarity. Luke, where are you? There we are. Son, you're doing so good. Our worship team took us there today, didn't they? Thank you. Luke chapter 21, 25 and 36. Expect to witness amazing and perplexing signs throughout the universe with the sun, the moon, and the stars. Thank you, sir. The raging of the sea will bring desperation and turmoil to many nations. Earthquakes will bring panic and disaster. What men see coming to the earth will cause their cause the fear of doom to grip their hearts. How many of you know that's not us? This is the world, okay, he's talking to. For they will even see the powers of the heavenly realm shaken. And at last when you see how the Son of Man comes, surrounded with a cloud, hallelujah, with a great power and miracles and the radiance of his splendor, and with great glory and praises, it will make you jump for joy. For the day of your full transformation has arrived. Then Jesus gave his disciples, and this is Jesus speaking, okay? So he gave his disciples this parable. He said, haven't you observed the fig tree? Or any tree, for that matter, that when it buds and blooms, you realize that the season is changing and the summer is near. In the same way, when you see these prophetic signs occurring, you realize that the earth is yielding to the fullness of God's kingdom realm. I assure you, the end of this age will not come until all I have spoken comes to pass. Earth and sky will wear out and fade away before one word I speak loses its power or fails to accomplish its purpose. Be careful. Say that with me. Be careful. Say it again. One more time. Be careful that you never allow your hearts to grow cold. Never allow your hearts to grow cold. Remain passionate and free from anxiety and the worries of this life. Then you will not be caught off guard by what happens. Isn't that good? You'll not be caught off guard. Don't let me come and find you drunk or careless and living like everyone else. For that day will come as a shocking surprise to all like a downpour that drenches everyone catching many unaware and unprepared that's not us say that's not me amen keep a constant watch over your soul and pray for the courage and the grace to prevail over these things that are destined to occur and that you will stand before the presence of the son of man with a clear conscience Thank you, Brother Matt. That's us. That's you and I. You know, he wants you to live with a clear conscience today. And how can you do that? How can you live with a clear conscience? By asking Jesus into your heart and knowing that the blood of Jesus washes over me and makes me white as snow. Your past is your past. You don't have to live. See, the enemy wants to remind you of your past. But I love it. Back in the day, we used to go to those Carmen concerts, and we had Carmen here. And he used to talk all the time. When, when Satan reminds you of your past, you remind him of his future. That's a glorious hope. And I remember leaving those concerts going, yeah. Champion! We're victorious people. We don't have to live 
under the barrel, so to speak. We can live under the spout where the glory of God comes out. You can be people who live in the blessing and peace of God, in the joy of God, not being condemned, but living in a place of living blessed as a son. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul encouraged the church of Thessalonians to do four things. You know, I told you about these two books. They're, they're some of the earliest books. They are the earliest books written in the New Testament. And Paul, he was, he was talking to this church in Thessalonica. And this church, they were a good church. As a matter of fact, they had been writing letters back and forth to one another. And Paul was so encouraged by them. He was saying, way to go, guys. Keep it up. You've been doing good. And he was urging them. And they had wrote this letter back to Paul. And Paul, I think, in some of the commentary I read, they were saying that Paul was responding back to them because the church wanted to know when Jesus was coming back. And Paul told them, hang on. It's going to be okay. You don't need to be concerned about that. You just need to live righteously and holy before him. You just need to have your sights set on Jesus. You just need to keep him first place in your life. And if you'll do that, everything will be all right. But he encouraged the church of Thessalonians to do four things. Number one, be prepared. Be prepared. I'm asking you today, are you prepared? I'm not talking about doomsday prep prepared. I watched a whole bunch of videos this week on doomsday preppers. That is amazing to me how far people have gone and have allowed fear to grip their lives. Don't allow fear to grip your life. Amen. Fear tolerated, faith contaminated. Let me tell you something. If Jesus provided for the children of Israel in the desert... And we have to go through some things. Let me tell you what Jesus is going to do. He's going to provide for his children. Do you know not a, a, none of their shoes wore out? None of their garments wore out, got holes in it? And every day, God gave them food. And they got to a place where, you know, we're tired of praying. And guess what? God gave them, he gave them birds. That's why I like bird hunting. He took care of them. Don't you think God can do? If he did it then, he could do it again. You don't have to live in fear. And I told you last week about a gentleman Y2K was happening Spent his life savings We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars On preparing for Y2K And when the clock struck 12 Many pranksters would, went out there And pulled the, the lever to the electricity playing pranks but guess what nothing happened that gentleman I knew him personally sad story guys because he became the laughing stock of the community no one believed a word he was said Every, ever since then he's had a hard time restoring his reputation God doesn't want you in fear. And wherever you're at in life, yes, we, we, we save. Yes, I get that. And we, we believe God for what he wants to do in our future. That doesn't mean we live foolishly and frivolously. 
It just means we live with an awareness that God's got my back. That Jesus has your back. Amen. So Paul here, he's encouraging them. Number one, be prepared. Number two, cling to the word of God. How many of you know the word of God will never fail you? Put the word in you when you don't need it. The word will be there for you when you do need it. Stole that one from Brother Tommy. The word in, the word will come out. Junk in, junk will come out. What you put in you is what's going to come out of you when the pressure is applied. Number three, live responsibly. Take care of your stuff. The Bible says that he encouraged them to live a godly, peaceable, and quiet life. When your neighbors are around you, what do they what do they notice? At my house, it's a car lot. Golly. God, I have all kinds of cars. I was thinking the other day, everybody's been gone. I'm like, there's probably something's going on over there at their house. There's no cars out in their driveway. What's your neighbors think? Because I want them to know the glory of God is upon us. Amen. Number four, Paul tells them, the future that you're facing, don't face it in fear. Keep living. You know, Paul's the same writer that went into great duress when he said, I've been persecuted, but not crushed. I've been, I, I, I've been abandoned, but not destroyed. I've been, I've been pressed on every side, but I've stayed the course. Paul understood what he was talking about. I don't care how bad it gets. Our eyes are going to still remain on Jesus. He's the only one that can save us. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I'm just going to focus on the first 12 verses and then I'm going to get you out of here. We've got a prayer to pray. It says, Now, brothers and sisters, about the times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should not surprise you like a thief. You are children of the light. Say, I'm a children of the light. Children of the day. (laughs) Amen. You are children of the day. We do not belong to the night. Or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awakened. Let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, And the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, say therefore. He said all that to get us to this. Encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing build one another up encourage one another you know you are the church you're the body of Christ but what I hear a lot of times is instead of encouraging one another and one of the things that gets on my mm, is when I hear us talking about one another. 
We should be encouraging one another. We should urge one another, hey, let's make it right with your brother. We should, we should really, really strive in everything we do to make peace with one another. Don't let strife be a part of your life. Don't allow backbiting to happen in your home. Be people of peace. The first part of this chapter is is closely connected to the last six verses of chapter 4, which we read last week. And Paul's message to the believers in verses 13 and 18 through chapter 4, Paul gives us the message God revealed to him to comfort the believers concerning friends and loved ones. Church is imminent, but we are not to be idle. And let me tell you today, one of the points I have for you. Point number one. The greatest protection and preparation for the second coming of Christ is to be in right relationship with Him. You want to know that heaven is your home? Be in right relationship with Jesus. Number two, as believers... And this is what Paul was saying. I encourage you. I urge you, brothers, stay the course, but occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. What does that mean? I don't go bury my head in the sand. I'm going to get busy about the things of God. I'm going to get busy about enlarging his kingdom. I'm going to get busy about staying the course and building up my spirit, man. So when it's time for me to minister, I have Holy Ghost boldness. Hallelujah. Don't be silent anymore, church. My mother, she, you know, man. She's she's, she's amazing. One of the things that inspires me is and, and, and she, she went and had business cards made. Business cards. Because when she saw people, she wanted to give people some information. Jesus loves you on the business card. And we do too at Lifehouse. And she just, she just wanted just a simple card to place in people's hands. You know what? Not everybody's wired that way, but that is such an easy contact. I told somebody, she said, well, you know, the missions team, we have eight people going on our missions trip to Bungoma. And I've encouraged them to minister one, one person a week, getting out of their comfort zone. And that number two, they need to be here Sunday mornings to pray. So guess what they've been doing? be getting in our offices and praying. And one lady said, Pastor, you're really challenging me. You're really pushing me out of my comfort zone when you tell me I've got to minister to one person. I said, what are you going to do when you get to Kenya? What are you going to do when you get to Bungoma? And I'm, I'm like, okay, pray. No, we do it now. We prepare now. And so I said, let me tell you, my mother did this thing with a, with a card. It says, Jesus loves you. And it's just a simple way where it's not invasive, but you can place it into their hands and say, if you need anything, just email me. And guess what? She went and had cards made. She said, Pastor, it's like she came alive making a business card. She came alive, and it was her way of stepping into boldness and just allowing the Holy Spirit to minister into people's lives. She said, Pastor, I've almost given all my cards away. A person that couldn't do it with a little bit of wisdom, a little bit of encouragement, is now stepping out. 
being used as a vessel for the master. Paul is encouraging each and every one of us to have that same kind of faith. What are you doing? What are you doing? We as believers are to focus on occupying till he comes. What does that mean? I'm going to love my wife. I'm going to love my children. I'm going to be a good worker. I'm going to be a man of faith. When God tells me to do something through his Holy Spirit, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to be quick to obey. When I, hear the, when I hear the Lord speak, this wasn't all this before service. That wasn't planned. I didn't say, hey, Tanya, I'm going to pray over here in a minute. I didn't do that. No, it was me standing here and the Lord said, you're going to do this, this, and this. Okay. Alfonso, you're going to pray and anoint. Alfonso, okay. That wasn't planned. That's a Holy Ghost initiative and plan. Now, what would have happened if I had sat there, I ain't going to do that? I would have held back the blessing. He would have never, they would have never received that song that was sang over them. They would have never received the love that was expressed to them through the precious Holy Spirit. You would have never received the breakthrough. You would have never received the now word about running in new lanes and new shoes. But because of obedience, say obedience, it's better than sacrifice, y'all. Being obedient, occupying until he comes. Occupying. Number three, we are called to walk in authority, enlarge territory, and increase the kingdom. This is Paul's encouragement to the, the Thessalonica church. You are called to walk in authority, enlarge territory, and increase the kingdom. Last week, I I, I had a point, and the point was this. Let me find it. When Jesus' grace and power are manifested, It reveals His glory. But Jesus' grace and power manifested. It reveals His glory. Now, how is His grace and power manifested? Through you. Through me. I can't heal a gnat's wing. I can't set people free. But I'm just the vessel. Grace, his empowerment, his enablement coming upon my life, his freedom, his passion for people and the lost, his love comes upon me. And as I step into that grace, I don't step at it alone because the anointing's upon me. So when the anointing shows up, his super comes upon my natural. In my obedience to be a vessel, I walk in his grace. And as I'm obedient, his power comes upon what I do. And the result is God's glory. I don't know about you. I've, been, I've said, God, I want to see your glory. The only way you're going to see it, you ready? It's by walking in his grace. Through obedience, being a vessel, and allowing his super to come upon your natural. And when that happens, the result. How many times in my life, how many times in your life have you been obedient? And you've just stepped into a a place of obedience and said, Father, I really don't want to do this. But because you obeyed, out of 
your vessel, he said, oh yeah, watch what I'm about to do. He puts his super upon you. He puts his anointing upon you. And people leave changed. That's what I want. And that's what Paul is urging the church of Thessalonians. And that's what he's saying to us today. Allow my grace to flow in you. And allow my anointing. As you obey, my anointing will come upon you. And the result will be my glory revealed. There's a prayer I want us to pray. Before I read this prayer, I feel like the Lord wants me to take you to Psalm 2. Psalm 2. Now, I'm just going to read this out of the NIV or the uh, Spirit-filled translation. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh (laughs) the Lord shall hold them in derision then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me you are my son today I have begotten you ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession you shall break them with a rod of iron you shall dash dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel now therefore be wise O kings be instructed you judges of the earth serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little blessed are those who put their trust in him goodness gracious blessed are we When our focus changes off the world, which is periphery to the church of the living God. Blessed are we when we put our hope and our trust in Him. There's a lot of people making plans. But if Jesus isn't in the middle of them, here's a prayer. I believe the Lord gave me to pray. And I asked Tanya to print this out because I wanted each and every one of you to have this prayer to pray. You can put this in your Bible. You can put this up in your mirror when you're getting ready in the morning. But let's all stand to our feet and let's pray this prayer together. pray this prayer together and after we pray this prayer we're going to take 30 seconds just to be silent before him ready read father thank you for second chances and giving me hope for my future I step into that future in faith I face each day with a newfound hope a hope that relies on the promise of your word As your child, I'm eager to walk out your plan for my life. I'm not doing this on my own, but I'm resting in you. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I love you. I thank you. I bless you.
here today, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No looking around. And you want to know, Pastor, I want to know that if I was to slip into eternity and close my eyes, when I opened my eyes, I would see the King. I would see heaven. know without a shadow of a doubt, would you just raise your hand? I want to pray for you today. We're going to pray a simple prayer. Thank you, man. Put your hand down. Anybody else? Anybody else? Just raise it up high so I can see. See that hand, sir. You put it down. Anybody else? Let's pray this prayer together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your son who died on the cross to give me life and life more abundantly. Jesus, thank you for shedding your blood and washing me with your blood and making me white as snow. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord, as my Savior, as my King. I look to you to help me. Thank you for saving me. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. An important step in every new convert's life is water baptism. Those of you that raised your hands, I encourage you. As a newfound step of faith, as a newfound step in your new direction, and in, in your, in, you can know that you know that you know is water baptism. It's an outward expression. It's an outward declaration of what Christ has done in your heart. I was baptized twice. <laughs> my, my, the last time I was baptized, my grandpa baptized me, and I was a high school, in, in high school, and I'll never forget it. There was a day it was a true conversion in my life. And I just, I just encourage you, those who raised your hands, the next step is water baptism. Okay? So go back there to the Connection Center. Tell them you want to be water baptized. We've got a sheet you sign up for. And water baptism is coming up, and I think we have quite a few. Next week, we have quite a few on the list. So you'll, we're going to have a great time. Because she'll also tell you that we'll have a class right before you on that morning and it's going to be a wonderful time of celebration can we just thank the Lord for the two people that gave their heart to Christ today Hallelujah. 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 brother Matt come and close this out brother let's give brother Matt a round of applause as he comes up If you were a guest with us today, thank you so much for choosing to uh, worship with us here at Lifehouse. Uh, Pastor Jeremy and Tanya would love to meet you. And so if you'll bring that orange card with you that's in the chair in front of you, just fill that out for us. We'd love to give a gift to you uh, and get that in your hands as also shake your hand and let you know we're thankful that you were here today. We're going to meet you right out here as soon as I dismiss. We'll be right over here. I want to remind you about Wednesday night, uh, the uh, food truck social at 7 o'clock. Are we going to be on this side? Okay, we'll be in the auditorium. Food trucks are going to be out. Food, tr food trucks. Food trucks are going to be out here. It's going to be an exciting time for all the life groups to come and participate in that. Uh, what's that? Yeah, so there'll be games. There'll be inflatable uh, jumpers for the kiddos, not for the adults. Stay out of them. Uh, and lots of food to choose from. So Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, come be here. Be a part of that. We'd love to see every one of you here on Wednesday night. Let me pray over you and bless you. Just want to remind you, too, there are a lot of great resources at the Connection Center. Be sure to check those out on the way, you, on the way out as well. Father, I thank you for each and every family represented here today. Thank you for blessing.